G'day everyone, this video is going to be about some breadboarding options, different types of breadboards, uh, a few different types of breadboards, ones that I've used anyway, um, some tips, some things to connect to breadboards and, um, and just basically how they work as well. And then the next video, it's going to lead on to the next video which will be a tutorial, we're going to actually wire up a, an effect and we will test it on an amp and um, we'll go through the whole thing and I'll show you exactly where all the components need to go on the breadboard to connect it all together. Um, so for this one, we'll just look at some breadboarding, uh, some breadboarding basics, um, and you know, some few things that are available and uh, how to how to connect everything up. Uh, some some of the accessories you use to connect things up. Um, so we'll take a look at that on the bench. I think it's a good idea to look at that first before we even attempt to to actually wire anything up on a breadboard. So let's take a look at that first. So before we look at the accessories, just want to talk a little bit about the breadboards, some of the breadboards that are available. There's a lot of different types of breadboards that you can get, different qual uh, levels of quality, etc, etc. I'd steer away from the really cheap ones, the, the um, often electronic shops sell um, the, the, economy, the economy brand ones, online electronic shop, online electronic shops <laughs> that specialize in cheap parts. I've had them before. And let me just tell you, if you get to a point where you're doing anything that has any level of complexity um, and you have a board that has connections that are intermittently working, uh, well, not working or even worse, intermittently working, um, it can create hell for you because trying to find what's going on that you think that maybe you've wired up the circuit wrong, you've plugged everything in the wrong, the wrong way and you're mucking around with it, but you've actually got you've actually got a, a connection on the board that's not working um, it's very difficult to, to, to work out so I'd suggest getting something that has at least a um, you know decent level of quality so the ones I've got here are Wish I've used this one a few times I've used this one a few times I haven't taken that one out of the packet yet um, I've gotten rid of all my economic economical um, breadboards because they were just too unreliable um, and if you look around, you'll see that um, Wish is often the brand that's um, recommended. <clears throat> so that's the brand that I've gone with, and, and so far, so good. Um, so there's three here. There's a small one, which was, I think, about... It's still pretty cheap, maybe four or five bucks. Um, uh, and it's got an adhesive back. If you want to stick it to something, you can make your own uh, mounting board. Like this one's stuck to a mounting board, which is an um, aluminium mounting board with rubber feet, which is, which is handy. I'll get to that one in a minute. And you can connect them together. They've got little sort of little interconnecting nodules on the side and, and um, uh, receptacles or sockets on the other side. So you can you can stick them together and expand it for as far as you need to expand it. And they come in all different sizes too. You can get, pretty sure you can just get the power strip if you want. Um, uh, different shapes, sizes, etc. Um, and yeah, like I said, four bucks. Um, that is a Wish brand one. Can't remember the model number, unfortunately. Sorry. Um, but... Uh, yeah, that's probably a good one to start with. I'd go with something like that before I'd go with an economical one. I'd rather, I would rather personally get a small board, like um, even smaller than this, to to start off to start off with. You know, for a guitar pedal, even half that size, it, it's good, it's big enough room for a boost. Um, if you plan properly, you know, you could fit, easily fit a boost or a small overdrive or something on it. Um, you know, but. For four dollars, you can get something that size. That'll last you a long time before you get to any level of complexity where you need more sockets than that. It's plenty of space, even if you space things out quite a bit. Um, it's it's a fair bit of room. Um, and then, like I said, you can add another one if you need the extra space. This one is is it the same size? I think it actually, uh, just despite that it looks bigger, I think it might actually have the same amount of um, sockets on it. Difference is, of course. It comes as a pack and it comes with these interconnecting, um, so I'm pretty sure that's solid core jumpers. Um, we'll get them out of the pack later on and have a look at them. Uh, not a ton there, uh, not a huge amount. Um, and there's actually preferences as to pe whether people like jumpers or a different type of way of connecting, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, but um, there's pros and cons to both and I'll go over that briefly as well. So that comes with the jumpers, like a little sort of starter pack, and the model number is down the bottom, WB102. Um, if you 
if you're interested in that one. And then the next, I think that was maybe like six or seven. I actually bought these specifically. I wanted to get a new breadboard um, because the, like I said, the other ones were having issues, but I also want to do a little bit of a video on it too. So I bought these three to show you guys, even though they're effectively the same thing. I'll, I want to get three, three, three uh, sort of going up in expense um, from, from this one to this one to this one. So just so you, you know what, you know, what, where your money's going and what you get, what extra um, conveniences you get, um, basically. So this one, I think, was about 10 bucks. So even for $10, it's not a lot to pay, I don't think, particularly for something that you're going to use. If you're designing pedals, you're going to be using them a lot. Um, you can get better ones than this. You can get big ones, ones that are on, um, that sort of tilt forward like that. They have, a, um, they have a piece at the back that holds it up which is good, obviously, for um, posture. It's easier to look at something that's tipped up like that, obviously, than if it's flat on the flat on the table. Um, and they go up, you know, up and up and up. And there's different brands that are more expensive than these. Um, this is just one that I would recommend that you start with um, and avoid the um, economical, <clears throat> I won't say that word, stuff. Um, so yeah, this one's got binding posts for, um, for positive and ground. Um, at the top there, so it has a banana plug at the top. I'm pretty sure. I actually haven't. I, I've used it a couple of times, but I actually didn't use the the, the um, binding post. But if we plug in a banana plug in the top, well, wow, I've just unscrewed it, haven't I? You can plug the banana plug in there, and then you could go off. The banana plugs usually have another another um, a, another connection there, or it's a bit it's a bit of a mystery to me, to be honest. Um, I suppose you'd go from from here into the board like that. Uh, not totally sure, to be honest, um, but they're there anyway if you if you need them. So you can go directly from your power supply, obviously, to those, um, and um, and then your power from there down to the to the well this middle strip here, positive and negative. I do like one thing I like about this one is that it's got positive and negative already on it. Um, it's just a little bit. I mean, if you color code red to black. It shouldn't be too hard to make, it shouldn't be, it, it, it would be difficult to make a mistake, but I've, I, you still do it when you're in, when you're in the um, nitty gritty of putting things on the board. Sometimes you accidentally plug it into the wrong one and obviously that can have a bad effect on the actual circuit that you're working with. So um, having something that's color coded on there I think is, is quite good, but doesn't have it. You can obviously just take a texture and, and um, put a black line down one of them as well. So that's three different boards. That's a, <clears throat> 104-3, which will probably be like the rest of the wish, bu uh, wish, wish bone, wish board, uh, pe uh, uh, breadboard. So it'd probably be WB. I'm pretty sure it's WB 104-3. Uh, um, but if you go to the wish website, you probably find stuff on there. So it's well, that says wishmaker.com.tw, but I think there's a US website as well. I'm fairly certain. I'm not getting any. I'm not getting anything from. I know I've got three wish boards here. Um, and I'm not recommending ec economical boards, but I can tell you I'm not, I, I'm not making, it's, this isn't a paid review of their boards, it's just a suggestion. And there's plenty of boards out there, you don't have to go with this brand, um, I'm just throwing this at you as a starting point, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty prominent, um, so you should be able to find one pretty easily as well. Um, I know Small Bear sell them, and I was actually considering putting these on my web store as well, which I'm still considering um, something simple like that just to get people started. Maybe I will. If I do, I'll leave a comment on the on the on the um, on this video. But um, at this point, I'm I'm not. But um, yeah, you can get them. You can get they're, they're around. So some ways that you can connect um, your components. Um, some ways that I connect my components with. You've got a few options. Some people use these. Um, which I forget their name, um, but they but often people that do Arduino stuff um, buy them. Ah, oh, I wish I could remember their name. I can't remember what they're called. Um, but if you just look up Dupont, uh, not Dupont, uh, they're Dupont jumpers. Um, they're the ones that have the socket on the end. Um, they have different purposes, but just type in Dupont jumper, and you'll find all sorts of options, including the solid core ones. You can get a pack. A starter pack for like three bucks. It's got like you know 200 different sized uh, jumpers in it. So um, the, the solid core jumpers, um, not these type, not the cable 
jumpers or whatever you want to call them. Um, but that is one type, so they've just got, yeah, that one's a bit bent on the, on the end there. They've just got um, uh, a pin on each end, um, and I'd probably recommend having both types, solid core and these cable type, um, just because sometimes, you know, there's a use for one and not for the other. You know, sometimes it's easy to go over the top of things, and sometimes it's easy just to go straight across. Let's get these out so we can see them in action. So there's not a hell of a lot in this packet, um, but let me get some scissors. Actually, don't watch me do this. Use my expensive side cutters to open a plastic bag. Um, and um, yeah, th there's not a huge amount in this packet, but could be enough just to get you out of out of trouble straight away. Um, these the the problem with solid core. The thing I've found the problem with solid core um, jumper connections are that they break. Um, the being solid core, they're um, they're kind of you get a weak you get a weak point on the corner there, and once you've inserted a few times, they start to break. The problem with these ones is that even with a simple breadboard, things can get very complicated. It can get very confusing when you've just got. I mean, you have to sort of imagine. You know, you're going to have maybe you know 20 of these all snaking around the place like this. And um, there's just, it just looks so confusing. I mean, that's four. Yeah, I've got four of them in there and it's already hard, getting hard to track what's going on. Um, so these, these are confusing. Um, these can make things confusing and these are little, little concerned about reliability, a little bit, you know, I guess you just gotta be careful how you pull them out and put them in. Um, you know, like try not to force the little pin in too hard because you'll snap it at the, um, at the corner there. Um, so, uh, yeah, I actually saw, just on a side, uh, well, uh, it's kind of relevant, it's not really a side point, but um, it's kind of relevant what we're talking about. I saw somebody did a <clears throat> comparison between the same circuit using um, solid core uh, jumpers and, and these type of jumpers, and they had it sitting right next to each other, and I can tell you that these look like a mess. They just look, you couldn't see what was going on. Uh, it wasn't even that complicated, it was just like a, uh, a basic overdrive, and it was just a mess. You couldn't see it. Other one, all neatly placed. You could see where everything was placed. Um, so I would recommend using a combination of both. I mean, see, look at when I talk about reliability. I mean, I've already bent that one out of shape. Um, you know, like it, it, I don't know. They're a bit fragile, the, the solid core ones. But I think I think a combination of both is probably the best way to go. So one other thing with connections. So that's pretty much all. You, that's all you need to connect. I reckon. Get a bunch of these. Get a bunch of the solid core, um, the solid core connections. One other thing I've made, uh, another very good use for these, I think, is these little. I've got a video on this um, on my channel if you want to see how I put it together. It's just like a little. Uh, I've just cut the end off these, um, uh, the, the the cable jumpers. Uh, I've cut the end off and I've put spade connectors on the end. What's the purpose of that? Well, if you've got a potentiometer with solder lugs on it you can actually just plug them straight on like that so when you're breadboarding that's very handy to be able to do that um, so and you can also I won't do it but you can also bend those out so they're pointing that way so it's not so you, you can just blue tack it down on the on the table um, or blue tack it down if you've got it on a mounting board just blue tack it somewhere here so they're not flying around all over the place and come out. Um, so, and I've just heat shrink that too, so that they don't bang against each other. Because once you start moving around, you know, I mean, they will start tapping together. So, just heat shrink the ends, and it makes a pretty good, pretty reliable connection to a pot. I mean, if you think about how else are you going to connect to a pot, alligator clips. That's that's turns into a bit of a nightmare, um, in my opinion. Um, when you've got three of those together touching each other, even when you put, you can't put that. You can't put the shield over the, the tip any more than it is. So um, if you could be bothered, uh, I would recommend doing those. They're, they've really worked for me well. Um, just put in the effort to make them all nice and neat like that, and um, it'll make your life easier. Um, so the, the actual, uh, just one last thing on that, the actual spade connector is, don't remember offhand because it was such a long time ago. I haven't, um, I, I, I made these years ago and I've been using them ever since. I would say four mil. Um, so the spade connector you need for a 16 16 mil pot with 
um, solder lugs is four mil, and they fit on. They, as you saw, they fit on snugly, like just just perfectly. They don't. They they go on nicely. They don't move around. Like that's a pretty solid connection. But I can pull it off if I want to. So they're pretty much perfect for that. The other option is to use these ones with um, PCB mount connections on them. I don't like plugging them in straight to breadboards because they kind of. Uh, I, I haven't tried them with this, so I've actually been hesitant. I think there could be a cause for damage on, on breadboards. I don't know if you guys use them much on breadboards, but I have in the past, and it's a very tight connection. I have a feeling that they're probably damaging the, um, the, the connections underneath. If you're continually doing it, I, I just want to keep this just for components, not for, um, not for any other hardware or anything else because um, I'm not sure if it's really what you're supposed to use it for. That's just my uh, opinion and experience but um, but do what you want. You can give it a shot. I mean they do they do fit as you saw. It's just really tight and I don't know I'm just hesitant jamming stuff into the breadboards because like I said when they be, when a breadboard becomes unreliable it can um, it can um, make your make your life difficult. So maybe that's another reason why the economy ones that I started with no longer work maybe it's a bit of experience maybe i've just plugged things in that i shouldn't have plugged in um you know possibly but e either way you're going to want to get something that's decent quality um because if you buy if you're buying economy ones you, don't, you just don't know what you're going to get um whereas that's a recommended brand and these days i just don't have time for stuff that doesn't work properly so i tend to go with um recommended brands so that's pretty much it for this one so also alligator clips you will need a few of those particularly when we um <clears throat> when we wire the effect up off board as well. So I just want to give you guys a basic um, rundown of breadboarding accessories and breadboard breadboards, some basic breadboards that are available um, that you can that you can start with. Um, and in the next video, which will be the next probably the next one in the series, next next one that I upload, we will be doing a probably a boost. I reckon uh, a, a, an LPB1 boost um, on on breadboard and the good thing about doing all this on breadboard is that you can um, change things at will very easily just pull the component out and swap it around um, you can make modifications see if they work it's a very important first step for designing your guitar pedal if you if you're wanting if you're wanting to go down that path designing your guitar pedal you're gonna need to know how to breadboard it goes hand in hand I'm not the most experienced breadboarder um, in, in you know I don't do a lot of it I, I, do, I do very minimal amount of it um, but I can tell you from from my my brief experience you have to be out you have to learn to breadboard if you want to design guitar pedals um, uh, or circuits in general I reckon you, you do, it's just something that you need to do you need to have one around and you need to know how to how to use it so we'll look at doing that in the next video um, and thanks for watching this one. I hope you got something out of it. And um, uh, yep, stay tuned for the for the next one where we'll be actually breadboarding something. Cheers.